SmartCast 4.0 is really, it's building on the strong foundation um, from previous versions. So with 3.5, we were able to improve the performance and the speed of SmartCast. And you'll see that same speed and flexibility, uh, user control and flexibility reflected in 2020. Okay. Um, are you guys fairly familiar mm -hmm. with? Yeah. Okay, perfect. We're not close. Um, so <coughs> right now we're in Netflix, but as part of the performance um, update that we've made, I'm just going to simply hit the home button, and then I'm able to return to SmartCast Home much more quickly than I was previously. So you can see it's really snappy, it's quick, it's really fluid, there isn't a stuttering or any sort of lag. Um, and you see that, you know, through, whether you're scrolling through these content rows, scrolling through partner rows, it's all designed about getting people to their content more quickly. Um, if I scroll down here, I wanted to click on popular movies. We now also have the feature view more. Um, so this will bring me to a page where we've kind of separated it by category. So if you want some free movies, you have that opportunity there. Trending, um, all these different ways to kind of find and discover content. So if I was maybe watching something with my family and I wanted to go check out How to Train Your Dragon, I could do that and it'll pull up the content detail page. Um, so this page not only surfaces information about the movie, but also all the places that I could get How to Train Your Dragon. So. That whole Vizio value about making sure that we're providing entertainment and great picture quality at the lowest possible price for consumers really ripples through into the SmartCast experience as well. Because if you're already subscribed to Hulu, now I can see, oh, I can just go into the Hulu app, watch How to Train Your Dragon versus potentially renting it or buying it elsewhere. Um, if I'm watching How to Train Your Dragon and, or looking at How to Train Your Dragon and it's not quite the right pick for me, um, I can browse down to the bottom and find more content, so maybe I click on the Lego movie. Again, you're seeing all the, the apps that's available on within the SmartCast app surfaced there, as well as pricing information and whether it's in 4K. Um, and then I can, again, continue scrolling down here. So maybe I do want Lego movie, but I'm more I'm feeling like Lego Batman. I can click into that, and again, you, you hit that content detail page. Um, then I can simply just hit the back button, and I'm easily taken through all of the options I just viewed. So. That's like, again, part of the performance update that's making it really easy and fast for people to discover content. So um, that's definitely something that you'll see as part of the SmartCast story in 2020. Um, I'm just gonna keep going back here. And I'm gonna return to um, SmartCast Home. And you'll see on the homepage, um, we have editorialized content and content surfaced here. In 2020, you're also going to see more personalization within the SmartCast UI. So, for example, if you're subscribed to a certain app like, again, Hulu, um, or we see that you're, we see you're clicking on that app, um, or you know, engaging with any of the editorialized content, we might surface some suggestions from Hulu. So. Um, that sort of personalization will be coming in 2020, and we hope to have more details to share a little bit later in the year. Um, now that we're on apps, we, we've launched um, a fair amount frequently, or recently, and we're always looking to bring more to the SmartCast platform. So um, we launched Tubi, Pandora, Sesame Street, which we're excited about with it being the 50th anniversary. So we're always looking for new apps to bring to the platform. Um, it does come with Watch Free. I don't know if you guys have heard of Watch Free, so over 150 channels, no subscriptions or anything required. Um, news, movies, sports, all that is in Watch Free. So again, that, that's the Vizio value that you know you could power on your TV with n and have no subscriptions um, loaded, and you still have access to free entertainment. So always looking to make more. Um, make more enhancements to watch free as well. Part of what you'll also see in 2020 is, um, you see, we, we, we have this grid and that exists today and that's something that, again, we're, we're giving people the flexibility if they like that traditional browsing experience and going through grid, you have that option. Um, but for those that don't want to go straight into the apps, they have that too on Smart Guest Home. Um, but within Watch Free in this grid format in 2020, you'll see that you can now favorite certain channels. Um, so if there's one that if I'm always going to, um, you know, a certain channel like Food TV, I can favorite that and easily navigate to it the next time I'm back in um, Watch Free. Over on the left, you'll also see that there's specific genres too. So if I wanted to just uh, navigate down to kids, 
um, or potentially look at recently watched. I have all those options there. So again, it's all about making sure that people can more quickly get to the content that they want to watch. Any questions so far? All right. So you guys have probably heard we um, have a really open voice ecosystem. So we work with oh. Apple Airplane HomeKit, uh, the Google Assistant, and Amazon Alexa. So also in 2020, um, we're constantly working with these partners to make sure that we're bringing the latest voice capabilities to the SmartCast platform. Um, so within Watch Free and using Alexa. <laughs> Sorry, I, did. I unmuted it just the wrong time. That's all right. By the way, when you teach me your voice, I can start making your Alexa experience more personal. Would you like to take a moment to do it now? <laughs> no, thank you. All right. Alexa, tune to channel 82. Tuning to 82 on Vizio Smartcast. So you'll also be able to use her to find and access different channels within Watch Free. Yeah. So we've talked about different ways you can navigate using the traditional remote, um, but if, if users don't want to use their remote and really like using and streaming from their phone, you have that opportunity too. So um, within the SmartCast mobile app, we have made some enhancements as well. So we're making it more easier to control the TVs within your house. So if you have several TVs, um, you can control them all through here. We're also um, have the ability to favorite certain channels as well, certain frequently used apps as well. So um, you can easily find some of your favorites, similar to kind of what we just looked through and watch free. So we're also always advancing and making updates to the SmartCast mobile app to give users, again, just make it easier and allow them to more quickly get to their content. Uh, other mobile functionality is we do have that integration with Apple AirPlay 2 and HomeKit. So um, I can easily, if I have something already on my phone that I want to share to the TV, whether it's photos, music, um, or I have a movie that I've already purchased um, through the Apple TV app, I can easily um, use it, stream it to the TV. So I could say, hey Siri, play The Secret Life of Pets 2 on Family Room TV. So it'll, the Secret Life of Pets 2 on Family Room TV. It'll quickly bring that up and then I'm not watching on my phone, I can easily just bring it up into um, my Family Room TV. If I lock the phone, all the controls are also there as well, so I can pause, um, I can skip forward, or again, thanks to HomeKit, I can use my voice. So, skip to 45 minutes. So it'll easily time jump back there as well. So because we work with Apple and Chromecast, um, we have the flexibility to be able to stream directly to the TV as well. And then I'm just gonna hit the home button from here and you'll see I'm taken right back into SmartCast Home. So that's, a, again, where you're seeing that improved performance. So when you're switching inputs and you wanna return back to the SmartCast Home screen, you can easily do that thanks to the SmartCast performance update. Okay, that's gonna be just for these TVs or how far back does that go as far as models? That's a good question. So all of these updates we're talking through are available to all our SmartCast TVs going back to 2016. And so that is the performance increase in yep, the menus? exactly. Okay. And all of these, so like whether it's the favoriting channels within Watch Free um, or these performance improvements, you're going to see users that have a 2017 SmartCast TV would see those same speed and performance enhancements. All right, so next I want to show you our all new Push to Talk voice remote. So we have a, a, a voice system that works with Alexa, works with Siri, and works with the Google Assistant. Um, but we really wanted to complete that voice ecosystem with another option, which is the push to talk voice remote. So maybe users don't like speaking across the room. Maybe they don't like the false wake ups like I just had for Alexa. Um, the push to talk remote gives them the flexibility to still use voice, but maybe in a different way. So you'll see that there's a voice button right here. So I can easily just push and search for content, control, picture mode on my TV, um, as well as some other informational queries. So change picture mode to vivid. So you see it can update there. Um, if I wanted to 
have search an informational query, I could say, tell me about Blackjack. And it'll pull that up from Wikipedia. So really trying to make sure that you can use your TV as the center of the smart home. So you don't have to pull out your phone and Google or really trying to bring that whole experience to, um, to the living room TV.